Hi everyone, and welcome to this Carpet Labs video on the introduction to the periodic table. Okay, so in this video, so I'm going to talk you through and walk you through this particular document um, that we're going to get very familiar with as we progress throughout this topic. Um, so, talk you through a little bit about how we, we look at it, how we use it as a reference tool in chemistry, and what some of the information that we can get from it. Okay, so I'm going to be using using a whiteboard here and then illustrating around this periodic table that, I, that you can see here on your screen. Alright, let's get into it. Okay, so first of all you notice the title. Okay, just I mean, I realise that's a very simple feature, but it's the periodic table of the elements. Okay, so it represents or it's a reference for all of the elements that we know of in the universe. Okay, whether they're naturally occurring, whether they're man-made, whether they're metals, non-metals, all those different bits and pieces, they're represented here on this particular document. Okay, so what um, I want you to notice to start with, okay, if I, um, so we've got two things kind of going on here. Okay, we have columns, okay, as we're kind of looking down it like that, and we've also got rows going across. So we have this kind of this grid sort of structure. Um, this grid sort of structure. But you notice that the structure itself, it's not um, just like a plain rectangle. It's not a, um, you know, it's a you know, it's six columns across and it's, or, you know, or eight rows down and 20 columns across and that's, that's kind of it. But there's got, it's got this kind of this peculiar sort of, sort of shape as you kind of, you know, this, these steps and then this kind of low bit in the middle and then it steps up and then up again. And then you've also got, um, you've also got these rows kind of down the bottom. Um, of our periodic table, if I slide it up for a second, um, those rows down the bottom, which which are, are chopped out of the middle. Okay, so it's a, it's a, I realise it's a bit of a strange sort of construction, but it's it's that way for a reason. Okay, um, so what we have the um, so we have these columns, and so we give these columns a particular name. We call them groups. Okay, so in the periodic table, columns are known as groups. Make sure that you take note of that terminology, please. Okay, so write that vocab down in your notes. Okay, um, and so we give, um, we, we call them groups, and we give these groups a number. Okay, so we might say group one, group two. Now, notice I'm gonna I'm gonna skip this kind of stepped bit in the middle. Group three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, now I realise that it's it, it seems a little bit like uh, this, the, the teacher's trying to do something tricky here, but the the reason is that this kind of section in the middle. Um, it's, it's a little bit like the Wild West in chemistry to a degree, is that there's, there's sometimes some, some strange things that kind of go on in here that don't in the rest of the periodic table, and, and we study the, the elements that are in here in a slightly different way. So for now we're going to keep things simple and, and kind of let them go. Alright, but so we were talk, we've give these groups a number, and so then we can refer to elements that are in these columns by their group number. So everything in this, this column on the far left is in group 1. So whether it's potassium, K, sodium, Na, or you know cesium, which is Cs, we say that they're all in group one elements. Likewise, we've got group three, group five, group seven, and group eight. You know, so we can say, all right, well, so helium is a is a group eight um, element, whereas you know, aluminium is a group three element. Okay, now we, we do have good reason for that in terms of um, and how these elements behave in the real world, and we'll talk about that as we go. Okay. So, if the columns are known as groups, then we go think, okay, well, what are these rows known as? Okay, so if they're not known as rows either, if I slide that across just a little bit, they're known as periods. Okay, so that's the other kind of key terminology that you need to be familiar with. And our rows are known as periods. Okay, so the well, same sort of thing, that we give them numbers as well. One, two, three, four, five, and six, and seven. Now, I'm not numbering the ones down the bottom because if you kind of have a, a little bit of a look at this example, you see this box says 5771, this box says 89 to 103. What we can see is that these two rows down the bottom actually should slot in, in, the, in a complete periodic table, should slot in here. But the problem is that it makes the document much longer, and so to fit it on an A4 page, you have to write really small, or as we do here, that we actually take that section out, slot it in underneath for convenience. But chemically speaking, it belongs in there. Okay, so that they're actually rows, you know, in long rows, period six and seven. Okay, and so um, just like with the groups, group and their group numbers, that the periods 
uh, and their period numbers also have a chemical kind of relevance to them in terms of what those elements are like and how their atoms are put together. Okay, so you can see, um, you know, so we've kind of got this, this strange sort of grid sort of structure. We've got groups as our columns, we've got periods as our rows. Um, and then also one thing that you'd be a bit more familiar with, perhaps um, from, from year eight, every example, is that we also, we can look at the elements that we see on this periodic table and look at them in terms of metals and non-metals. Okay, so I'm kind of going to put this, this step sort of line like that. Okay, and so what we have on this side, we have metals, and that also includes these ones down here. Okay, and then on this side, we've got non-metals. Okay, um, now I, you know, so so I didn't just decide to you know, put that border in because it because it looked pretty, looked like a set of steps. We, what we notice is that the elements that are around these steps, that you know, everything on the left hand side had behaves like what we know about metals. Everything on the right hand side behaves like everything we know about non-metals, which is very different. But then also the ones that are on the border, um, are sometimes uh, you know, so in that kind of you know. The things that are kind of just on either side of this line, we often refer to as uh, the, the term that you might remember. We talk about metalloids or semi-metals, that they're a little bit in between. Okay, but so there, the kind that's the kind of information that you need to be familiar with to start with. Okay, that we have um, columns known as groups, we have rows known as periods, we number them, um, and that we and also being able to find metals, non-metals, and metalloids. Alright, that wraps up our video. Thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.